ट <coughs> with slit clamp we examine the anterior segment that is till the anterior part of the vitreous <coughs> beyond that we have to use some other instrument uh, a thermoscope can be divided into broadly into three categories the first uh instrument which uh, comes in this category is called direct of thermoscope it is a handheld of thermoscope and uh, its advantage is it is the uh, first ever invented of thermoscope and its advantage over the other uh, of thermoscopes are that it is handy you can uh, take it to the wards to the bed ridden patients and easily mobile it is charged by the cells rechargeable cells or other cells and uh, the advantages are that we dilated pupil when we examine the fundus or retina or posterior segment we dilate usually uh, the pupil with the help of tropica might and uh, tropica might acts for 4 hours after that pupil comes back to its original uh, size by dilatation we see through the pupil the posterior segment and with the help of direct thermoscope with the help of fully dilated pupil fully dilated pupil we can see the optic disc which is the terminal part of the optic nerve optic nerve has got four parts we can see the macula we can see almost 50% of the fundus and the center center most part uh, can be seen by the direct thermoscope in very high magnification these are the advantages of the of thermoscope the disadvantages are that it is uniocular that is we see it with one eye so depth perception is not present that is theopsis for example if there is some raised lien like retinal detachment or uh, some other lesions which are not flat they are difficult to examine similarly because of high magnification the field of view is small as the Uh, magnification magnification increases field automatically decreases when magnification decreases field of view increases so the peripheral uh, part of the retina from where the retinal detachment the which is the mo- uh, one of the most common diseases of the retina it is difficult to detect with ophthalmoscope it is best uh, Uh, used for detection of early diabetic retinopathy uh, and other diseases which involve the center of the macula like age related macular degeneration diabetic retinopathy hypertensive retinopathy central retinal vein occlusion central retinal arch occlusion or diseases of the optic nerve like uh, optic neuritis papillary edema these are which uh, which uh, uh, are present at the posterior pole they are best seen with it 
the second uh, instrument in this category is indirect ophthalmoscope uh, one more thing that uh, why it is called direct ophthalmoscope because if you see something at uh, uh, on a, on the mid on the on the nasal side for example this is my nose if you are seeing something at the nasal side that it is present actually on the nasal side and if you are seeing something at the temporal side it is present there and then there and there and indirect ophthalmoscope is a head mounted ophthalmoscope which is binocular and it has a light source direct from the electricity so the power of the light is uh, uh, more than the uh, direct ophthalmoscope obviously so the advantages of uh, direct of uh, indirect ophthalmoscope are that in that we usually ask the patient to lie down on our, on the couch and we have to use our 20 diop plus 20 diopter lens to see the retina after dilatation of the pupil we in a spine position we <coughs> place the lens between the examiner and the patient and we examine all the four coordinates now as opposed to the direct thermoscope in the indirect thermoscope we are using an additional lens it makes the field of vision small so sorry field of vision large when field of vision will large the magnification will magnification will become small so it is best uh, used for the diseases which affect the periphery like peripheral retinal degenerations retinal tear retinal detachment the diseases which i mentioned in direct ophthalmoscope like diabetic retinopathy and other diseases which affect the central part they are uh, less appreciated because though they are visible very clearly in binocular they are visible but the magnification is very low uh, for example the uh, microaneurysm which is the first sign of diabetic retinopathy its size is 30 microns and it can be seen with direct thermoscope and if you can see even one mac, uh, micro aneurysm you can uh, label it that the patient is very likely to have diabetic retro, uh, retinopathy and this 30 micron uh, diameter of aneurysm will never be visible with indirect thermoscope okay so the second um, uh, thing is that as opposed to direct thermoscope in indirect thermoscope the i will come i will come after uh, a couple of minutes we are making some okay <coughs> okay and uh, <coughs> uh, as opposed to direct thermoscope in indirect thermoscopy the what you see is upside down and laterally inversed for example the thing the lien or the anatomical feet, uh, anatomical uh, uh, structure which is present for example on the nasal side you will see it on the temporal side and the thing on the temporal side you will see on the nasal side the lien which is seen on the upper side you will see it on the lower side and vice versa this is a very important fact that is why perhaps 
it is named indirect ophthalmoscope the third uh, uh, type of ophthalmoscopy or fundoscopy is slit lamp fundoscopy as you can see the slit lamp in slit lamp fundoscopy we as it is usually uh, as it, it was not invented to see the posterior segment to see the fundus with dilated uh, pupil or undilated pupil we have to use a lens uh, so that we can approach to the posterior segment like in indirect ophthalmoscope in this case we use plus 90 doctor spherical lens and again it is between the patient's eye and slit lamp biomicroscope are you getting my point when patient's chin is on the slit lamp you place your uh, you place your uh, arm like this and keep the lens in front of the eye and through the binocular microscope you see through that lens through the pupil to the fundus and with the passage of time it has now become the most convenient and perhaps the most widely used method for fundoscopy because uh, with the invention of many uh, wonderful lenses uh, besides 90d there is a pan fundoscopic lens which Uh, which is made uh, which uh, converges the light and you can see the very periphery of the lens web of the retina even with uh, 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 the you, which you cannot see with a direct ophthalmoscope but like in direct ophthalmoscope which see the very, uh, very much periphery the special lenses can see the periphery so and it is very handy you don't have to mount the Um, in direct ophthalmoscope you can simply sitting and you can uh, uh, take the lens and after the dilatation you can see and it is equally uh, good for central regions like diabetic diabetic retinopathy papilledema and retinal detachment it can see the periphery well as well and the central region as well so our first choice is nowadays is a slit lamp fundoscopy or ophthalmoscopy again in this uh, the uh, one thing is common with indirect ophthalmoscopy is that the what you uh, the what you see is upside down and laterally inversed that is nasal on the retina uh, temporal temporal thing on the retina uh, nasal side what you see on the uh, superior side is actually on the inferior side so this is uh, the optics of the indirect of thermoscopy or fundoscopy but uh, with practice uh, you your brain brain of an ophthalmologist learns uh, how to interpret the, these things so at the level of undergraduates you need to remember just these facts so this was uh, a short video regarding different types of 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 thermoscopes thank you thank you